blessing to the Lord. To be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I thank God for all of you, for all the guests. I thank God for my wife. Uh, my mother-in-law comes along with us. It's just a blessing to be alive. Amen. Amen. Uh, he talked about this sermon. This sermon got here two days ago. Amen. Two days ago. He called me at the last minute. <laughs> if you have the Bible, if you will, turn with me to the book of Esther, the full chapter. I'm going to try to be as brief as I possibly can. So I'm going to ask you to pray with me. Pray with me. Uh, matter of fact, let's stop now. Father God, we thank you so much for, for this day. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity to be alive. We thank you for this opportunity to be used by you. And Father, we do not take it for granted at all, Father God. We come tonight with a thankful heart to give you praise for who you are, how far you brought us from, what you've done for us throughout the year, Lord God. And we just, we're just so thankful for what you're going to do. So Father, we come lifting you up tonight. It's all about you, Lord God. And we just come to praise you and to lift up your holy name. So we ask that you to superintend this time, Lord God. Bless everyone that's here. Clear our minds from all the clubs, Lord God. Clear our hearts. Allow our ears to become our eyes, Lord God, that we may see what you have us to see. Yes. Understand what you have us to understand and know yes. what you have us to know. Give us the strength to apply it all, Lord God, according to your will. And we'll be forever careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Yes. And it's in Jesus' name that we bow. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Before I start, let, let me just read something to you. I, I thought this was, I thought this was rather interesting. Give me a second. A study revealed that an average 70 year old man had spent 24, 24 years sleeping, 14 years walking, 8 years in amusement, 6 years at the dinner table, 5 years in transportation, 4 years in conversation, 3 years in education and two years studying and reading. His other four years were spent in miscellaneous pursuits. Of those years, he spent 45 minutes in the church on Sundays, five minutes were devoted to prayer each day. This adds up to about five months that he gave to God, that, that he gave to God over his seven years. Even if this man had been a faithful church, church goer who attends Sunday school and three one-hour services per, per week, he would have spent one year and nine months in church. Man. Sit down and figure out how you've been using your time. Sit down and figure out how, how you've been using your time. How, how, how much of a portion do you allot to God? And after doing that, ponder on Matthew, the, the 16th chapter, the 26th verse, who said, What good? Will it profit man if he gain the whole world but loses his soul? You talk about a wasted life. Amen. Seventy years and all he spent was that much time to over to God. We can say that it's sad. Amen. But the question is, what about you? How would you add up? I'm reminded of a story. 
story about a man. Who, it was a king. I wouldn't sleep right now if I was at home, okay? So I wouldn't sleep. I wouldn't sleep. It, was a, it was a man, it was a king who uh, he threw a party. That party lasted for 180 days. He had a lot to show off. 180 days. After those 180 days, he threw another seven day party where, uh, first of all, he invited all the, 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 all the leaders that were in his empire to this party. He was over 120 prophets. Okay, so he had pretty much an empire. And he invited all the leaders and military leaders over for this party. And it lasted 180 days, after which seven days he spent time having another bank. In the midst of all that, they were drinking. There was no limit to how much they could drink. After he got finished showing off his empire, he had a beautiful wife. And he thought somehow that it would be a good idea if he would get his advisors to, to go and get his wife, bring her, and allow her to strut her stuff. But she didn't think it was a good idea. And so she disobeyed. She wouldn't come. This man being the king, it means that he had a whole lot of power. And he could write decrees, and once those decrees had been written, they couldn't be revoked. Amen? Amen. So he, the, 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 the wife didn't come to, to see what he wanted. So he asked his, his advisors, he said, man, what, what do you think I ought to do with her? Well, she hadn't broke any law. He said, well, what, what, what can I do? Because what had happened was, be her being the queen, she had done something that had it got out. The other women, these men felt, would be disrespectful to their husbands, and they felt like they could do whatever they wanted to do. So he wanted to nip it in the bud. So he, they come up with the plan that they would write a decree, and after which this, this queen would be banned from his presence for good. Mind you, the Bible says she was a beautiful woman. Now, you know she had to look good if God said she looked good. Amen? Yeah. She was a beautiful woman. So these advisors told him that, hey, uh, they, after, after the father had died down and he realized what he had did, he come to his senses, Paul. Hey, man, he must, have been, he, he must have been in a bad mood because he said those that were around him asked, they, they knew something wasn't right. Hey, man, they knew something wasn't right. And they said, he said, uh, what, what should I, he said, what we should do is we should reach out to all of the leaders and, and have all of the virgins within the empire brought to you. And after they have gone through the, the rigorous process of beautifying and purifying themselves, you choose a queen to replace them. Yeah. Lo and behold, that's what he did. But keep in mind, the province in which he lived was a pagan province. And over 100 years earlier, Israel had been brought as slaves to this land. And over time, the king had made a decree that they could go back home to their own land. But some of the Jews had established themselves. Amen. They were living good. They had decent jobs, so they didn't feel the need to go home. So in the midst of him trying to choose a new queen, the Bible says that there was a particular woman by the name of Esther. Amen. The Bible says she looked good as well. She was a beautiful woman. Matter of fact, the Bible said that she was fine. <laughs> Amen. This queen had a he, he had a thing. He liked pretty women. Nothing wrong with that. So what he did, this lady went through the process, six months of purification, six months of beautification, and the time was up. The Bible say that he, after all the other women had had their turn, he found the liking in Esther. He found the liking in Esther. And the Bible said that he placed the crown on her head. As time moved on, Esther was the queen. But Esther had been brought up by an uncle, a cousin, 
by the name of Mordecai. Mordecai was one that was out in the, he, he, he had a job, per se, to do go. So he had a little access. Amen. He had, he, he, he had his ears to the street. Mordecai, after he, he told Esther not to tell her nationality for fear of compromising her, her, her chances of becoming queen. Y'all with me? Y'all yeah. like y'all saying too. Wake up. Yeah. <laughs> after which, oh man, after which time passed, the king, he promoted a man by the name of Haman. Yeah. Amen. Haman was an enemy to the Jews. If you read Exodus 17, Haman was a Amalekite. God had sworn that these people would be his sworn enemy because Saul supposed to have killed all these guys. Amen. So they were enemies to the Jews. The king gave Haman a promotion. And the orders were given that whenever Haman came out, everybody was bow. Mordecai being a Jew, for whatever reason, he wouldn't bow. He wouldn't bow. Haman got upset with Mordecai. He couldn't enjoy his promotion because he was upset that his, his pride was hurt because Mordecai would not show him honor. Time was gone. Haman was so upset he went home to his wife. He told her about his bad day and what all had happened. He said, babe, I got a promotion, but this thing is agitating me. This Jew won't buy that. She told him to go out and build Galos, got Galos, Galos, and hang him. <laughs> Haman had money. He went to the king and he told the king, he said, listen, I'll pay you if you let me kill these people. Amen. He hated Mordecai so bad that he was willing to pay the king estimated sum today would be millions of dollars just to have him killed. After the decree came out, Mordecai sent word to Esther. And that's the uh, to our tip. Verse number 14 says this. I'm going to read 13 and 14. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arrive from another place. But you and your family, your father's family, will perish. And who knows but that you have come to the royal position for such a time as this. Well, I said, Elsa, listen, baby, just because you're in the king's palace, that doesn't mean you're going to escape the decree. He said, matter of fact, who knows that you're not in the position that you're in but such a time as this. I believe after Mordecai's conversation with Esther, Esther had to come to the realization of, of, of her purpose for such a time as this. And coming to the realization of her purpose, I believe there were three things that she had also, she had to also come to grips with. I think she had to understand that that, that the time in which she lived, she had to understand that <clears throat> she had to understand who created time. And not only that, she had to understand the, 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 her position in the time in which we live. First of all, she had to understand the time in which she lived. She lived in a time when her and her people lives were in In other words, she lived in a time when the Jew Sounds somewhat like today, amen? amen. It's no different from the day. We're, we're living in a time where people's life are in danger. Amen. It might not be their physical life, but we're living in a time where people's souls are at stake. Amen. amen. And I come at you today, how do you know you haven't been placed in your position for such a time as this? Yeah. See, time is a moment. It's a 
period, designated for a given activity. You know the funny thing about time? It always runs. It's always running. Yeah. But it gives out. It never stops, but it gives out. Yeah. Esther had to understand the time in she, which she lived. I believe you and I have to understand the times in which we live. Yeah. Timothy told us, Paul told us in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, he said, people will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, they will be boastful, they will be arrogant, they will be uh, abusive, they will be disobedient to their parents, ungodly and unholy. He said they will be without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, not lovers of the good. They will be treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. He said, have a form of godliness. But the mind is powerful. Right? Yes. Right. I think we gotta ask ourselves, what's, what's my attitude? What's the attitude of the people that I'm around? What's the attitude toward money? Right. Right. Do you or do the people you are around, do they think too much of themselves? Yeah. Right. Right. Are you the type of person that's always ready to brag? Mistreat or insult other people. Are the people that you're around or are you one that always makes statements that ruins others' reputation? We live in a time where brothers will betray brothers, fathers will betray children. Children are raising up against their parents. Works of the flesh. Are becoming the norm. Not only by the world, but by the church also. The enemy is still using people just like he used Haman. Haman's purpose was to hinder God's plan. And he's using people today for the same purpose to hinder God's plan. that we need to come, with, come to grips with. Pastor Johnson couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. We have to come to grips with. First of all, it's, this may sound petty to you, but first of all, we need to come to grips on whether or not we are born a girl. Amen. 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 What if Esther had been confused about her sexuality? Uh -huh. There was no way that she could have fulfilled her guardian and task because she, she was she would have been confused. All right, all right. There are other ways that we are confused. <clears throat> the reason a lot of us can't fulfill our God-given purpose for such a time as this is because we don't know who we really are. Amen. We have so many other things and so many people pulling, pulling for our attention that we can't hear God. All right, all right. Amen. I'm hurry up. I'm letting you know now I'm about to water ski through this text because it's big time. We got time. Go ahead. Listen. She had to understand who she was. I mean, she had to understand the time in which she lived. It's critical that you understand the time in which you live. Listen. And not only that, you got to know who you are. <laughs> it's one thing with knowing who you are. It's important to know that, but it's crucial to carry out your duties. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. God's in control of time. Amen. I know for a lot of us we think that time is our friend, time is on our side, but the truth is time is not on our side. Amen. Amen. It's not on our side. It can be your best friend or it can be your worst enemy. Amen. Amen. Why do you say that, preacher? Well, I, I believe that I agree with John C. Maxwell when he said this right here. The wrong decision at the wrong time can be a disaster. Yes. The wrong decision at the right time can be a mistake. Amen. The right decision at the wrong time is unacceptable. The right decision at the right time can 
equal to success. I believe that's what Mordecai was saying to Esther. Listen, baby, you don't, you can't, you can't afford to be quiet right now because too many people's lives are at stake. Stay. Not just your life, but there's a whole nation depending on your decision. No, there are people that are watching your life. We all have been given a circle of influence. Amen. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you have been given a circle of influence, and you have been allotted for a certain amount of time to fulfill your purpose within that influence. <coughs> God can use us to be strict to other folks. Yeah. 
not dwell on the past. Amen. He said, the youth grow tired and weary. Young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not <laughs> Sometimes you get tired of her. Amen. Being a Christian is hard, because, Amen. Trying to do the right thing, it's not always easy. Amen. Amen. People don't always do what you feel they should do, Sister Rolanda. You don't always get along with all the people you feel like you should. Amen. But it's your job as a believer to gain strength from Jesus Christ. Amen. See, see, Jesus said, Jesus went to the cross. Amen. Jesus went to the cross Amen. so that we could have a relationship with him throughout eternity. Yes. Amen. 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 For the sake of time, hold up. I ain't said half of what's on this way, but I want you to. So I, I have a lot to like to say, but I, I, I'm going to respect this. If you're here today, if you are here today, and you failed in 2020, you know that your actions fail God, no matter what anybody say. You know that your actions fail God. You could have came to church every Sunday. You could have came to Sunday school, Bible study, worship service. You could have came to every time the doors of the church were open, but you know your actions fail the Lord. Yes. You may be on the flip side. You went to church every time. You only came when you felt like it, when it was convenient for you. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory. Look at right. You can get right with God right now. You can ask God to forgive you for your shortcomings. And you know that your actions have been anything but pleasing yes. to your Lord and Savior. Lord, Lord. Time is not on your side. Yes. Time is not coming. Time. We haven't even made it to 24 yet. Yes. Amen. So if you hear the bad, I plead with you. Get it right. So that you and I would have a chance everlasting. That's what this text is all about. Esther was a type of Jesus. If you read the text, Esther even said, after Mordecai had talked to her, she said, Mordecai, I'm going to go before the king, even though it's against the law. Even though if I go to the king, it's against the law that, that if I go to him, he had to come. Yeah. 